This conference will now be recorded. All right. All right, so uh, move to just, uh, look over the minutes. I haven't seen them. You want for our uh, uh, benefit of who's taking our minutes to know who's here? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so everyone want to just state their name for the record so the minute taker can know who's here. So Joe Johnson, Richard Shepard, Larry Rudy. Kent Urshawa, Roger Peterson. Thanks, Prof. Next resources director. And Catherine Rooks of Postal Engineering. All right, thank you. John Rendon, Harbor Master. Oh. Yeah. You. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Dan Hall, <laughs> chairman. Um, so now we can get on with the minutes from November. And you can look them over and have problem with them. I looked them over as John Hubmaster. Uh, I, I, I thought they were accurate. Yeah. I had any issues. You don't want to approve? I vote we accept the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that was Kent who did the motion and, and Roger yeah. who second. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scan it to her. Okay. Okay. Um. So next, order of business would be the minutes. So we don't have anything under consent or open forum. So we'll move right to the financial report. I have so, a couple copies. Anybody want a copy? <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, you know, it looks like we're off uh, a bit from previous year. If you look at December, you know, this December FY23, which we're in compared to last year, the monthly totals are off about $12,000. Um, we're right in the middle of um, seasonal dockage renewal where we had uh, deposits due and then uh, coming up here, we'll have final uh, payment due. It's a timing thing. If you look at seasonal dockage rental, we collected 45,500 in, you know, this year compared to 61 last year. And that's just a timing thing. So I wouldn't be too alarmed. I think we're tracking well with, with revenue. Um, visitor dockage, again, um, this year we put in place a a um, a date in which we wouldn't accept requests for transient dockage until January 15th. Um, it was just becoming too much for us to try to, you know, people would leave for the season and say, hey, I want to stay in as a transient, you know, all summer, next summer. And they were telling us when, when they left for this last season. So it was just too hard to kind of keep track. So we put in place, we wouldn't take any transient requests for um, for dockage until January 15th. So that's why that number is low. You're gonna see a jump here shortly when we start processing some of these, uh, these requests for transient dockage. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned at all about um, our revenue numbers. So if there's any questions, uh, Certainly will try it. I was going to make a comment to that. The earlier people will be able to reserve and just go back in time. And I'm just on the radio two days ago, the Nantucket Ferry began taking reservations. They had 4,000 people make reservations for car travel on the wow. coast. I bet you if they go back to December, people would do it then. If it's in November, they'll go to 2025 if they wanted. Right. So I think that was a good thing for us to finally have a date and to stick to it. Yeah. 
But it's funny, the vineyard does next week. Ne next week is the start date for Sorry, vineyard yeah. park ferries for, you know, for reservations. And like we did it last year, like we got the queue for a certain week that we were going. Yeah. And yeah. if we didn't, like our friends got bounced, like they couldn't get it. So it's like you had to, it was like buying tickets for, you know, a concert. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. January and you worry like what month, what week in July or August do I go? You worry about waking up at 4.30 in the morning to be ready at yeah. five to do it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's all I got. All right. Budget. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, there's a financial, no new business, old business. We're moving on to the uh, proposed pier ramp and float at 14 Mill Pond, uh, Anino, and Coastal Engineering. Okay. And I have a presentation I can hand out. Is that yeah, pretty much what's on here? Nope. We were able to get some right. renderings done to more accurately type try to show the oyster castles that we have proposed. Okay. Yes. But I mean, everything in here is everything, there, yes. so I don't need to pass these out. No, that okay. should be, it should be. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, last time you didn't have the oyster castles or any of the mitigation for that uh, on the proposal. Now what it is, it's the pier ramp and float, and then as mitigation for the dredging and the dock, we are putting in uh, proposing oyster castles which and seating in between the oyster castle rows so, so can i um, ask one quick question yeah. yes so the only change to what we saw last time has to do with the mitigation nothing on the pier ramp that's my understanding yes. okay. so the second sheet is just the plan view showing the location mm -hmm. of the oyster castles which is right along the bank right in, in outboard of the salt marsh so they'll actually help to protect the salt marsh against any of the chop waves in there and then they are right along the edge and they help to have oysters grow on them and so this is just the view looking upstream and you can see that the oyster castles are right along the outside of that salt marsh area and there's spaces in between so they're not all just one straight line there are openings in between them and then just another view looking down from the bridge and you can see how close they are to the shoreline and then the dimensions just so these aren't large structures uh, when they're on top of each other one foot three inch tall like it's they're not overly large they're right up against the side and at mean high water, they're going to be underwater. I mean low water, you'll be able to see them. Uh, the seed bags are right in between in those opening spots for more oyster growth. Have you used kind of in other places? We haven't, but they've been used in other locations. Do they work? Uh, from my understanding, yes, the oysters start to grow, and then the way you put them on each other, it can give a lot of space on those castles for them to attach. Uh -huh. So, uh, and then the aerial there, um, just showing how it should look with all the navigation in the middle and how close they are to that side as well. So there's no legend, but the yellow, does it refer to something? That's, that so that's, in the rendering, that's just where the salt marsh is. Okay. It's a concrete structure. Okay. Uh, that the oysters they like to, yeah, they like to attach to that. So. And I think if there's uh, Todd Turcott is on in case there are other questions. But... Where is the Do you have any idea where the closest location is that's used them? I don't. Uh, I don't know if Todd uh, is on the call. Todd might. Todd's well, on the call. Yeah. Is it Todd? yeah, Todd's yeah, here. Todd's yep. On there. Yep. We'll give Todd his due, certainly. And this is more presentation wise. As the natural resource director, in, in years of time on the river and knowing this area, when that project or this proposal came about, I don't think it was initially part of the dock and pier. But when it came up a second time, when I first was apprised of it, and I looked at 
I thought it had to do something with a requirement in order to have the, the dock and pier put in. Like in order for the dock and pier to fit and work, this has to be put there to stabilize the bank. It was not. It was an attempt, or it's, it's their version of the shellfish mitigation, sure. which up until this point, I mean, actually up to this point, there was a time there wasn't any mitigation with docks and piers. It was just, you know, remove anything that's possibly that catch resources will on its own attempt to reseed an area. Well, conservation started to do a mitigation process in which uh, funds were set aside. Conservation or natural resources would have access to it. That's the only sound of general funds in town. And that was used to purchase seed, oysters, or cohogs, or soft shells at the time, and raise them in the lab, and then appropriately seed that area at the time of year, maybe not in the same exact location for reasons of either access or survival. Um, so it was the first time, other than that current mitigation, which conservation has been in favor of and supported for many years, um, that this has come up. So now it's come up, well, this is an option or something they're requesting. I don't think there's, as an interest, I don't think that, that these oyster castles wouldn't work. I think they would work. But whether they're appropriate here or what it may open up to river-wise, or access there by general public coming down the hill, or a commercial guy who's breaking over the side of the boat with a rake down into the water. There are oysters growing here right now without these castles. So it's not, I don't think there's an argument whether it's going to propagate more, I think it would, but it, it wouldn't be my choice as natural resources as the mitigation route to go. I would like to see mitigation. I'm more in favor of the standard mitigation that the town has done. Conservation has used terms like cumulative effect with other things, whether it be dock, dock, docks in the river or space used up by a piling, how significant that is. I think, you know, a couple pilings is insignificant, but I think this was about 100 feet, the other spaces in between. But to me, I look at that as a significant amount of space, but also those other comments of if they build it and they will come, not oysters, but people be in there. And yeah, at high tide it's covered, at low tide there's that aesthetic part of it. And I don't look at this and say, well, what does this look like right here? What does that look like up and down the river? Because someone will see that and say, oh, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that. And this is a time where it can be discussed and made, you know, aware for everybody. So I'm in favor of mitigation. I'm not opposed that this wouldn't work to grow issues, but that I don't think is a requirement for their docking peer proposal. Thank you. I hear from the Harbor Master. Did Mr. Turcott have anything else to see? We can see if Todd had something on other locations of the oh, well, there was, Yeah, um, this is Todd Turcott, Coastal Engineering. The There was a question as to where else these were, were used. They've been used in Wellfleet Harbor. Um, don't have the exact location, but they've been used in Wellfleet Harbor, just for, for context to answer that question. They were using okay. boxes, weren't they? Uh, in Wellfleet? Or oh, halfway up between the blue bridges. The oysters. In um, the tide hollowers. Not that um, I'm aware of. We we were lawns on the bend there, they had some boxes. Mm. They never got permits or came in the last 25 years. No. To, the only one I'm aware of is someone got permission to hang uh, scallop nets underneath their, their dock because they were off the bottom, they weren't in the navigable area, submerged 24 hours, seven days a week, can be moved around. That I was aware of that scallop. And then outside Herring River, kelp, but that's the only two things that I know in Herring River, aquaculture wise, that I'm aware of. I may have yeah, yeah, from the Harbor uh, Master. John Rendell, Harbor Master. So, yeah, from my perspective, I, I'm not a, a fan of putting hundreds of concrete blocks along the shoreline within the intertidal zone. Um, certainly from a navigation standpoint, half the time these are going to be underwater, half the time they won't be. Uh, I think there's a risk there, especially in that location where obviously everybody knows the currents that you have in the Herring River and then you know in the location where you know the busyness of the summer there's boats coming and going under Lower County Bridge 
you know, sometimes people have to wait out until one person gets by. You get pushed to the towards the bank. If you hit those things, they're they're going to be unforgiving. I just, you know, you hear from the natural resource director that from a mitigation standpoint, we have a mitigation plan that works, and I just don't see the benefit of of adding hard concrete structures in the intertidal zone. For one, we've been uh, had multiple conversations regarding structures when it comes to docks and piers that you know conservation has uh, has uh, not been in favor of, and so it, it it puzzles me that this would be something that would be um, looked upon as favorable from that standpoint. Um, and, and from the aesthetic, somebody's going to have to address the aesthetics of it. Maybe it's not the harbor master, maybe it's not the natural resource director. But if you if you if you Google oyster castles and you look at some of the pictures and what they look like from the shoreline, it's not attractive. I mean, it's just a bunch of concrete piles loaded on top of each other along the shoreline, and, and I just don't think that's something that we want in our waterways if we have a mitigation plan that already works. And I think Heinz is right. If this is allowed, other homeowners will probably look to do similar. And before you know it, we're going to have door lines full of these things. And so, you know, from my perspective, from a navigation standpoint, I have some concern. Um, but I also have a concern from the aesthetics. So that's my opinion on it. I, I, I think Mr. Turcott has heard me um, on this uh, before, and, and I don't think my my opinion surprises him. You know, ultimately, it's the Conservation Commission's decision. But from my standpoint, I, I don't support it. And one thing to add on that, um, we were discussing adding on signs at the end of them to let uh, anyone know that there is a structure underneath the water at the higher tides. Yeah. So that is one thing to add to that uh, navigation piece. Okay. But they are really close to the salt marsh. Anybody else? Any questions? Can't do I'm just wondering what, what problem are they trying to solve? What, 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 why, is the, why are we offering these? What, are they solving a problem? Are you just trying to grow for, Yeah, mitigation for the, because they're dredging in that area for the dock, was the mitigation for the shellfish that conservation was requiring mitigation for. So this was the option. Okay. Was it the only, I mean, is there softer options? <laughs> Not that I, I mean, I would go back and ask the question. <laughs> We have mitigation plans for every dock project and every draft project from a private homeowner that comes in front of this committee. You, correct me if I'm wrong, Heinz, as natural research director and conservation, require a mitigation plan. And that re mitigation plan is reseeding the area. The area right? We're close to it. That's how they've gone about. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I, I don't want to speak, but maybe this, this is their idea. This is a really cool idea. Can we do this? I think that's what it is. It's like in lieu of the town standard mitigation procedure, would the conservation agent or commission committee accept this as the mitigation for this project? And it's come before us and we weighed in on it. And again, I don't want to speak for conservation, but so many times in the past, they've been so vehement about loss of habitat from a piling, which is 12 inches in diameter times six. Well, especially in Herring River, too, it's come up three or four times. And how many of those are there? And that's so I, again, it'd be kind of puzzling to think that that this is something that I mean, certainly they'd listen to any proposal, but that this is something that they would be in favor of. I'm just curious. I believe it had to do with the overall area of the structures being more than just being able to see that small area outside the dredge. But Todd can speak further to that. Sure. So if I may, to, to and again, Don Monroe met on site with you folks. Don's on vacation. So I'm sorry, sorry for that, but <clears throat> Catherine's filling in as well as myself, but I've been involved 
um, in this project for, for quite a while with Dawn. And a couple of points just to, to understand why we're here at, at this stage and why we're, we're proposing this. You're right, there, there's usually it's just the piles and there's a mitigation plan for those piles. This particular site, we are proposing to dredge unsuitable materials, anoxic mud in this area. And as part of that request, the Conservation Commission, again, I'm not gonna speak for them, but the, 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 the direction or the, the, the pushback we've received from them is we were providing mitigation upland in the above the salt marsh, a high marsh and, and coastal bank mitigation in lieu of the dredging as well as the shellfish. They felt that there's never any in water resource area mitigation when we do that, it was all upland. So they were they had tasked us with evaluating ways to mitigate in tidal resource areas. And this castle, oyster castle approach did mitigate that by providing, and it's yes, it is a structure, but it's also very similar to rocks and, and other things that the oysters will grab onto it provides a much larger surface area with all the voids inside that the oysters can attach to and provides a bigger mitigation for a smaller size structure. And we're, we're exceeding the, the mitigation requirements by doing this. And it's an in-water mitigation, something that has not really been done before, but have, was been pushed by the commission in this instance. And that's that's really why we're, we're here at this point coming up with this alternative. It's a unique feature to this site in the Herring River, Herring River, as we've all known from the Board of Selectmen last year, those hearings, there's only a handful of, of new docks that could go in. This was potentially one of them with some additional accommodations for the dredging requirement. And the quality of the, the, the soil that's being removed was bad, it was poor soil. So from that perspective, that, that's why we're here. It's, it's a little bit above and beyond because they wanted in in water mitigation to match the resource that we were affecting. Um, in regards to in regards to currents, I know I heard a comment earlier about currents. Yes, the Herring River has significant currents in the in the middle of the channel. We've actually done flow current flow meter current readings at this site and other sites similar to this, and the currents at this elevation in this area are minimal compared to what would move these these structures or anything in the normal tide cycles. So we, we've accounted for that. We, we've made sure that's why we stacked them and didn't let them just be by themselves. They interlock very well and, and pr provide a, a little bit more stable mass in that design. I, I, uh, thank I, you. I, and I understood the explanation. And so that that's, I can see that. Um, Hi, uh, this is the uh, council for uh, the Aninos. The revised plan also pushes the castles right up against the salt marsh. So basically, there is no navigational issue because it's right up against the salt marsh. And as Todd said, there's not much current there. Um, so what we're really trying to do is just create a living shoreline right along the edge of the salt marsh that might also help uh, with wave uh, impacts to reduce the slumping of the salt marsh. The problem that we have, uh, frankly, is that Heinz has been generally supportive of mitigation efforts that we've permitted through myself and Coastal over the recent years, and all have been approved. Um, the um, Conservation Commission or certain members, you know, don't frankly listen to Heinz on certain levels on and take his technical input. But in this case, the commission has required us, uh, unlike any other doc application that Coastal in our office has done in the recent years, to add this extra layer of additional mitigation to get to yes. And so in discussions with Amy, uh, she was supportive of it. And I believe the commission generally is supportive of this additional basically living shoreline right at the, the seaward edge of the salt marsh. It's not like it's out in the middle of the channel or even extending halfway out or, or anything in, into the water sheet whatsoever. So, I mean, would we prefer to just not go with this 
of course. We would just prefer to do what we've been allowed to or required to do in every matter. But um, in this case, you know, they're looking for me. So that's the conundrum we face. Thank you again. Um, and I guess from one perspective, it's okay. What does this look like here in this kind of schematic and what it would do? And then and several of us have thought, okay, after it's there, I envision people walking across these, walking on either on the marsh, because it's that close, coming down, because they, they are currently people walking on the north side and walk the shoreline looking for oysters. There are people stepping across this, again, maybe someone with a, a bull rake, digging down in there and those kind of issues leading forward which can all be avoided in, in some ways if it wasn't in there but it's what it could lead to I guess is the the concept that I was bringing up before John sort of mentioned that too where that may lead to and that's kind of a point that really should has to be hammered out certainly by conservation what what may happen but thank you i understood all that and we got a question from john the harbor master well i'm not sure it's a question but oh. i do have some input um i think i heard that this mitigation is required because we are dredging uh and therefore this type of mitigation uh, should be done because dredging is involved. I think you're dredging 86 cubic yards, if that's what I read correctly on your plan. But I would just say we've had multiple projects where dredging is included that have it, their conservation hasn't required forced the castles to be part of the mitigation plan. And I don't see why this particular small dredge project of 86 cubic yards would require it. Regarding not very much current i think you're dead wrong take a boat out there hang out and see what kind of current there is and see how it pushes your boat around there is significant current uh in that location and as far as not navigation these things are underwater half the time i understand that it's not in the middle of the channel but why introduce hard concrete structures in the waterway if you don't have to because if somebody gets in trouble loses an engine gets pushed up towards the marsh it's much easier and much more forgiving to run into mud and salt marsh than it is concrete blocks and that's that's where i have a hard time with it. thanks need a permit for like a oyster farm just to put this dock in uh, I don't think it's viewed as an opticulture No, I don't think it's looked at as an opticulture site. I don't think it's viewed as that I'm aware of. So they're not harvesting for themselves no. what's off the no. Okay. No, it's just trying to mitigate, yeah, for mitigate the amount that we're dredging out there. You okay the dock? Yes. Yeah. This is just conservation. That's why I asked early on. The only change, this has already come in front of waterways and the latest proposal on their dock and float receives the support of water now it's coming back strictly because of the addition of these oceans yes. that's my understanding that's correct so john's also on. correct this the conservation commission has surely allowed other dock projects that have included nominal a uh, dredging which both Hines and John have you know found generally favorable and instead as much to the concom the issue in this case because I've been involved in the hearings um is not that this is a dredging project it's a it's a new evolution of thinking uh by the commission and Amy somehow because generally we're doing work in the uh water-based resource areas namely land containing shellfish and land under the ocean that we need this extra layer of mitigation beyond just the purchase of shellfish seed which has been the routine uh conditioning in harwich with this commission and every dock project we've been involved in on the cape so 
this is a new evolution of their thinking that I don't believe is related specifically to dredging. It's just they're looking for more mitigation. And this is what we've tried to come up with, which has been received favorably by them. If this board, if this commission feels uncomfortable, you know, with that, then um, we're forced to go back to them and say uh, that, you know, the waterways is uncomfortable with it. So it's it's not a proposal. Apart from, as Heinz said, hanging uh, some um, seed bags off the dock, which is another idea that we've also floated and which Brad's been generally supportive of, there really is no other mitigation at the, at the locus that is possible. So we just felt that by positioning these castles right up against the uh, the salt the eroding salt marsh, so that it's basically a living shoreline, albeit it is concrete, um, we felt that this was uh, a viable idea, which was well received at the commission level. Thank you again. It's Heinz Brock, Natural Resources. Maybe you can confirm this, but Division Marine Fisheries has also weighed, uh, weighed in with a letter or email that they viewed this as a permanent loss, a permanent loss of habitat, although it's being put in to attract or grow oysters, but their view was it was a loss of suitable habitat within Herring River. Have you seen that letter or did that come up at all? Are you aware of it? Not aware of it. And I would just say that in the other project that Todd already spoke to, um, which was a much more significant installation, um, that obviously uh, the project got permitted. So um, it seems that the comment by DMF was, you know, ignored or overridden. Okay, thank you. I have that letter. Yeah. If anybody, and I had a phone call for wants to see it. Yeah. But down the line, I had a dock halfway between Lower Cobbies. Okay. And could I get a permit to grow my own oysters and do the same? So we're going to have castles all the way up and down Herring River in the future? And not just like, you, but who else is dock right? The that. dock across, directly across from it, that all that inland marsh and everything, the one there is it, you own it. I go in there, can I put a, get a permit to make an oyster farm? And then if you were denied, is then your response is, well, what if I dread? Then yeah. can I put it in there? It's like, where does that stop? Yeah. It seems like a snowball that's been working fine with the mitigation. Yeah. But I don't want to screw the guy out of the dock. Yeah. That area is very suitable and could easily be feeded with oysters. That well, I mean, or that flat in front. I mean, it could be setting the precedence, you know. Um, so this is where water be planted where you got conservation and, and waterways and having different concerns. Yes, that's the process. Well, Todd has some input. Yeah. Go ahead. I have a question. I, I have a question maybe more for Heinz and, and something to consider. Heinz, would would it be would it be something to consider as a pilot process? You know, if where you're we look at doing this for you know, a couple of years and evaluate it annually, and they're concrete blocks, they can be removed. It's not like they're a permanent structure, right? So if it was something that, to, to see how it worked and even put signage up, you were talking about, you know, um, shell fishermen going up there, just putting signage up that it's a it's a test pi a pilot site for, for um, shellfish habitat, see, just to, to do it that way and, and have it reevaluated as part of that and, so, and not have it as a permanent long term, but be reevaluated after two or three years. So, good question. Um, the, this idea that it could be removed, you know, there is some impact. I don't know what it is, but actually to put these in, there is some impact with whatever is being done and been placed in. Removing it would cause some sort of disturbance as well. It, this schematic shows you one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not saying this is something that I fully endorse with, but if you're describing a study and you were going to choose one of those six sessions, six sessions, sections, and it was in a certain spot, maybe. Again, I don't approve or deny proposals, but 
I think someone brought up the word uncomfortable earlier. I guess that's one of my position. I am uncomfortable with what's being presented and described. And I guess less of an impact and less of a worry with if, if it was a much smaller scale. Still get your answers that, you know, one of those six, but based upon the oysters that are growing there now, I think it would work to attract oysters and grow. I'm pretty certain that would occur, but I don't think that's what was being discussed. Right. Is that the best it's, problem? It's not, so much, it's not so much just the oyster growth, but how it works in the environment with the navigation and, and with everything and the aesthetics and, and, and all of that. If it, it's put as a pilot study to see if this is something palatable for long-term or even in the next another project where you're talking about concerns, it's it's done on its limited basis. All right, good question. And I think those subject matters that came up before, this idea of someone sees one of those and they, they may not want six of those, but they might want one of those too. And yep. people are still gonna go down there and walk over it. People are still gonna try to harvest from there. But again, to answer that question of pilot study, yeah, one could get you an answer of that. But again, I don't, I don't see that as, if this was a completely different request for a pilot study to grow something somewhere, I think that's a different discussion than this is how we want to address mitigation for conservation. I think those are two different things. Because I've approved, I approved. I've been in favor of pilot studies, all sorts of things, whether it be a small scale kelp study, small scale Chinese hats in which we harbor, small scale uh, scallop eggs underneath a floating dock on a small scale pilot study. Those kinds of things I've been in favor of or supported small scale stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I guess what, <laughs> I guess my negative, what's the smallest amount that could answer that question? And one of these, it might be, is it 10 feet? One is 10 feet. I mean, what a, a half of one, I don't know, but you know, underneath where the dock is, I don't know. I don't know if that would suffice conservation's desire for you to mitigate the offset dredging again. Yeah. Maybe that's something that they would reconsider too. Two opposing agendas that we're stuck in the middle on. Yeah. yeah. I, I give. I mentioned, but I'm just very curious that this is something that they would entertain, looking at the amount of space that's being taken up in the river and how they've reacted to other. It, they were they were very excited about the amount of, of open space for the the shellfish, which okay. I don't I mean surprising you know hey we we know the the challenges that we've been up against in regard to the impacts that they always say the timber piles have on shellfish, which is minimal, but yet this is this is a benefit to them. So mm -hmm. I, I can't answer for okay. that for them and their mindset of it. Did you have any more? That's no. not from MSA. You know, I feel. So what's the, what's the, on the boat, yay or nay, what's, I mean, what's the? Well, we would need a motion to either accept the plan as proposed or I'd say continue with the motion that we approved before without the, I mean, the extra mitigation. Yeah, it was pretty much that we would, Vote to still allow the dock, but not in favor of the the beds. Yeah, I mean, all that's in front of us is what's being proposed has to do with oysters. Uh, I, there's nothing in here, I don't think, that's that addressed any the, aspect of a length or flow of a plan or, that's already been approved with regard to the pier and float. I think you're voting on whether you support this mitigation used in oyster castles, and I think it's a yay or nay vote. So we're an advisory, we're not a regulatory. No, but do we support it or don't we? Okay. Well, even if we denied this, we already what we already yeah, approved, yeah. they could they could still do. As long as the well again, as well, Ken said, we're advisory, so it's yeah. gonna go in front of the conservation commission, and the conservation commission is gonna ask the engineers what was Waterway's position. And of course, I'll write something outlining it and they'll have to consider our position. They're ultimately going to say yay or nay. We're and advisor. And Amy at Conservation may contact me and say, hey, can you write a letter that I can bring forth on the day of or would you show up and just 
explain your position on that. And again, I don't know, prove or deny, but it's kind of another ingredient that they add into their, and my position would be like, I don't think what was taking place up to this point has been broken in any way. The mitigation this is, seems above and beyond and more. I'm sure as to why it goes back to them to, you know. Can I explain why they want that? So we make a motion to uh, accept the original proposal for the dock with kinds of mitigation instead of the castle. We're do, we're doing well, we, we've already approved, approved the dock, so it's just gonna yeah. it's, it's more just a motion of what do we apply? Do we approve the uh, the castle the castle mitigation or not? No, it'd be the conservation mitigation. Yeah, that's um yeah we're we're opposing or accepting the oyster castle mediation for the dock we already approved the dock yeah so I mean that's what's that's what's honestly what's in, in front of us is the the oyster castle right and it would be the conservation commission I don't know if the word is correctly used but they would in a sense discuss a variance to their shellfish mitigation practices in the past to 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 entertain that yeah So we'll have to make a motion to deny the request as proposed. Um, this is Kent Drusella, um on January 18th, 18th. Um, for the Oyster Castle mitigation as per plan at this time. And I would put the address in there at 14 Millpoint. <laughs> You don't want to repeat it or yeah. I mean, okay, we can. So let's just let's just do it out. So it would be to deny uh, deny the motion make a motion to deny the proposal for oyster oyster yeah. castle mitigation at 14 mill point. Correct. Yes. We have a second. I'll second. Put the vote. All in favor? All in favor of the of not propose not not, not allowing but denying the proposal. <laughs> so I, uh, I, 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 yes. All right. So opposed to anybody? Anyone opposed? Abstentions? Any any other? All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we had nothing from the Board of Selectmen. Monthly reports, Harvard Master. You guys got my annual report. If there's any questions, uh, I'm happy to ask, uh, happy to answer them. But again, I think we had a good, busy year, good revenues. SAR cases were, you know, our, our maritime assist cases were, you know, right on average, a little less, a little below average, 42 cases, quite a few toes, 25 boat toes. Um, but yeah, I, um, Round Cove over in you know, Buzzard Bay, does that work out good with all the parking? Yeah, stuff? that's a good question. I, you know, it was the first year, so um, I think it worked well. I got positive feedback from residents who, you know, use, use the facility a lot. I think their access uh, was improved. Of course, we've got the other side complaints from those people who couldn't get <laughs> um, permit. But I, I think it, um, I think it went well. I think hopefully we'll write less tickets this year as people start to really, you know, pay attention. And but um, did you meet the uh, did you have a limit on number of uh, parking stickers you sold? 
No. No, all right. No. No, I think, uh, oh my gosh, I don't remember. Of course, every round cove mooring permit holder gets a sticker, right? Because they have a mooring there. And then we sold another 45, I think, is the number that comes to my mind. So it wasn't a huge. Anyways, I think it's it's helped. I do. But if there's anything else on the monthly report, and, and I sent you, I believe you guys got Heinz. I know it wasn't part yeah. of the package. Yeah, the did, second email. I, I, I did send that. Heinz annual report as well. So, yeah, that usually January is so the time of year that department heads submit their previous year's annual report, which is what I went forward to there, just a summary of things that took place within that three so we normally do the water sampling, the herring, and eel migration. I'm trying to think of something that may have been different last year other than North. We had thousands of spider crab molt that came up in November, and I had to go back another town reports. We had that occur in November of 17 and November 2014. So there's this, I'm sure these spider crabs molt yearly in the fall. It's just the tides and the currents. Certain times, Harwich happens to be the destination. I get called, like, there's all these dead crabs, and I show up, and there's not a seagull around, and it's these empty carapaces. That's the body. They're crunchy and dry. So that occurred. That's in the town report. Um, we had another year of the Division of Fisheries putting an electronic fish counter into the run, and the number this year was 292,000, which 292,000 seems like a big number, but that when five years ago, we had over a million. And so what also occurred this year with Division of Fisheries and Natural Resources, there was a proposal put to the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Commission to look at a possible limited take at the herring run again. Based upon the numbers that we saw five years ago, and while it took time to edit and rewrite this and submit it, our numbers didn't just fluctuate up and down, they just decreased to 900, 400,000 to 292,000. So the plan was approved at the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Council's level, so basically it just said to the Board of Selectmen Harwich, if you would like in the next five years, you can open up a sustainable 10% kind of take if you want to. Well, if we want to, that means natural resources is going to have to come up with an enforcement plan, uh, a way to, you know, issue resident, non-resident uh, permits to do so. So, long story short, I went in front of the board of selectmen ten days ago, and my recommendation was: it's great that we got this, but it looks pretty bad if we were to open the doors, have an issue this year on lower counts or just taking of, or and then we close it again. So my recommendation was, can we wait and see what happens this year, April, May of 2023, and then revisit that, because it's not a use it or lose it. You have five years to kind of, and that's all that is in the paper too, but uh, in the second one, favor of taking their time. I mean, it's been 2004, you know, it's, the town has been a good steward for that, and it's, we've got one of the strongest runs in the state. And one thing that really, really point directly to the second part, if a run opens in the state, believe it or not, there's gonna be pressure on any other run, because herring don't come with receipts. You can say, I got them, where? But right now, no one can be in possession of them. So that, that's something that has to be considered. If, if you know, there'll be legal taking, but then there'll also be illegal taking in runs. So a lot has to be worked out. So that, that was kind of, it's in the annual report too, that description, but everything else was on track and ran, ran well. Too many seals in there, I got is there any other town sites that open this? Not open, but there's up to, the town of Pembroke has that certificate or permit to do so. But I think they're also like, well, who else is going to stick their neck out besides us? And the Division of Fisheries is gathering data on other runs to kind of come up with this plan. But it's very difficult to do so because not only we experience this dramatic drop, the whole southeastern region, and there's so many factors that go into that, whether it be environmental or predation or these fish go up for three years before they come back. There's so much that can happen to them, the water levels, water quality. And so to pinpoint, well, what's the reason they didn't, you know, those fry didn't survive and go out? All you have are the numbers that come back. And it was sort of depressing to hear that the entire state had that. And then we have low water levels. And so connectors between ponds and streams are low and fish can't get through. And it, you know, it's you're not working in the laboratory. So all those things. And so being conservative and taking the time and then the paperwork the quote for me is like 
no harm in tapping the brakes here. And they did. It's a different time. I said, well, maybe next year we can have like a one day celebratory <laughs> day at the run. And I'm picturing, you know, balloons and confetti and kids and nets. And I'm supposed to like jump all that. I thought, I, okay, that's better than a full opening. But, you know, yeah, there's generations of kids who don't remember. It's been 20 years. Right. You know? And there is some tradition with that and the row and the smoking and herring. And so it, I, if I could have a magic wand, I'd like to see a million fish come through this spring. Back to the number that occurred, which said, hey, maybe we could come up with a plan because it'll all come to the force like and then down to me to say, okay, I manage it and make sure it's run well at the run with, with everything else you're doing. So I'd have to have help with the wardens or was this a volunteer thing, but there could be writing citations. So then you get a new person. So I didn't think it was a road race. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those <laughs> road races, yeah. Have details, carrying oh, details. How far is it? 5K. Anything else? Next meeting? I think that uh, rounds the agenda out. So. Is there anything you have to put on February? What's that? Anything that would come to the yard? Yeah, I don't have anything yet, but we'll yeah. see. You know, I'll yeah. let you know if I yeah. can. Just like we always do. But yeah. I think the date is, I put it on the agenda. Next meeting is February 15th. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. <laughs> Roger and then Joe. Yeah. Do you have any plans uh, to do Alan with Bridging again? Great. How much of the chat? All right. Meeting's over. We're going to stop recording.